they said, well, if you don't tell us where it is, mm-hmm. we're going to assume that you've acquired it through criminal activity. Oh, you can't be kidding. And I, I, I sat there listening to this thinking, my, oh, my, doesn't history repeat itself, hey? Oh. So what did they do to avoid going and having criminal charges mm-hmm. against them? They disclosed that it was a legitimate fine. And overnight, of course, the word got out yeah, around those surprising. round tables yep. that there was gold in such and such a place out near the gold yep. fields. And then you had a gold rush. So it's it's history repeating itself. It's a kind of a presumption. Well, if you've made so much money, you must have done the wrong thing. It's Ed Radio Australia. Malloy with you, enjoying the old afternoon here, sitting down with uh, Mr. Uh, Whitaker. <laughs> I've almost called you Travis. Sorry. I really am. I can't do that. Well, <laughs> thank basically, you. Thank you, Mr. Malloy. <laughs> I'm here with my mate Derek. Um, <laughs> is that better? Is that hey, better? Yeah, mate. All G'day, right. mate. It's all right. Uh, we've got other mates around. Okay, we're not completely mateless. It's all right. Uh, outside, we have uh, Shaquille, who's on his way in very, very shortly. Let's jump straight into it. We've got a lot to cover today. So, I think. The elephant in the room is the one that's closing down. Um, we've got a lot of names for this particular bank. Um, <laughs> no, I was actually talking about Bank West, but we'll go with that. Um, appreciate it, mate. There's nothing wrong with your know, self degradation It's okay. Um, let's let's talk about it though. Let's get straight into what Bank West is doing here. This is the now. This is understand. This is the bank that used to be the R and I, the Rural and Industrials Bank, the Bank of Farmers back in the day. If you can really go back. Mm. Um, that was the bank I went to as a kid. That's where mm, mum and dad banked right. that sort of stuff. Um, and still that's have, how old I am. <laughs> and still have accounts with them. That's sort of stuff. And yep. Got the email from this week saying, hey, look, um, we're going to close all the branches around here. We're, yeah. we're going to go completely digital here. Um, and every branch should be uh, shut down by October 2024. 15 regional banks are converting to ComBank branches. Mm. That kind of shows the agenda right there. Right there. Of course, ComBank, it's Commonwealth Bank, for those who don't know, um, they own Bankwest. Uh, they said they want to do that by the end of 2024, complete all of that. And as a result, all the ATMs that are Bankwest ones are closing down. There'll be no longer operate off-premises uh, ATMs. Machines will no longer be maintained following individual branch closures. Um we recognise that this may be difficult news if you or your loved ones bank in branch or if you feel reassured knowing a branch is nearby. We're committed to supporting you through this change. This change will enable us to invest in the digital channels a major a majority of our customers are increasingly choosing to do. They're banking with us. I'm reading off their website, bankwest.com.au. Okay, you got the B and W around the wrong way, but never mind. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I, look, as I say, someone who has – I, I bank with Bank West for many, many years and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, look, they held on to my money and certainly used enough of it back in the day to, to make more profits. I find this just deplorable. And when I look at the reasons why they're saying – and, like, talk about – fiddle your stats, right? They've said basically the bank's uh, usage has dropped down down some massive number. Um, like, you know, I think it's 96% of um, transactions are now online uh, based on the last three years. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but something happened in the last three odd years. What, what happened? I, 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 don't, I can't remember. Um, it's it coming. From, what was it again? Uh, hang on. You shut the bloody earth down, okay? You shut it down. We couldn't go into the bank. So if you're basing the statistics, 96%, on the fact that people aren't going to the bank, because you locked the bloody doors. I think the intent here is that CBA have wanted to do this anyway. Oh, and, no doubt. And because no doubt. what they did some time ago was say, we're not going to open any more new business bank accounts. That's right. Okay? Remember that. So that was from a, a strategic position, a silly position to do if you want to grow something because business attracts more money coming it through it. Obviously, the overheads to run a bank account for a business is more because they do more transactions mm. than a mum and dad account or an everyday uh, savings account. But... I think this was intentional. This is all in the pipeline. I from thoroughly a agree. I well, thoroughly may I agree. make the suggestion that every customer at Bank West, mm-hmm. I mean, they've got nowhere to go, but when they do close their accounts mm-hmm. and move their business elsewhere, to send an equally ridiculous letter to Bank West. Yeah. Say, go F yourself. <laughs> we, we do want to support you during this difficult time. It is difficult. 
<laughs> and we're supporting you by taking our money and telling you to go f yourself. Well, that's that's what I think you should do. Well, and well, should they take it to CBA? Well, well, this is the, <laughs> this is the problem. Look, there's got to be some alternatives. I don't know what they are. I'll throw a couple. There's got to be some alternatives. Yeah. But I actually believe it or not, I actually think this is a good thing. Personally. Okay. No, no, no. Bear with me, because th- there is going to come a time when mm. people will get fed up. Yep. And. I don't know how bad it's actually going to get before they do, mm. but surely there's going to be there's going to come a time. Um, those people that have been part of the movements that you guys are part of, the freedom movement and all that, if you get rid of some of the crazies in that movement, please can we get rid this of this? Is the general the general consensus? People are sick of this, mm. and I think that the more that big corporates are showing us their hand, the more that we can go right. I don't want to do business with you, and surely somebody will come up with the br- grand idea of saying. What if, bear with me here because this is craziness okay, now, okay, was sitting there. what if we actually <laughs> gave the people the types of services that they actually want? What are you, some sort of conspiracy <laughs> Craziness, theorist? right? Come on. <laughs> so if that happened, if that, maybe I should do it. Maybe I should set a bank up. Why the hell not? But no, this is, if, if that actually happened, I think that, that whoever does that first uh, will end up with such a, uh, an overnight – Well. Success. Are you Star talking about good old fashioned customer service? Oh, exactly. oh, is, that what you, is that what you're talking about? With, with, with a call center that, that, that really sit down for this one, <laughs> with a call center located in Australia. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine? But no, I did not do this. <laughs> no, I'm looking at this, this, this Bombay. Is, this I'm is, in Duncan. This is overwhelming. Uh, yeah, yeah. Throw the racist stuff my way. I'm ready for it. <laughs> but, like, okay, honestly, it makes me so angry. And I'll tell you something funny, though, is Bank West. Uh, on Friday had to turn people away at the branches because there were so many people closing their accounts that they didn't have the staff to carry it. So literally as of Monday, they had to up their staff to it because there were so many people closing their accounts and pulling their cash out. So I'm saying, hey, I'm encouraging it. Run on the banks. You know, Take all the cl- cash well, you can. But don't close your account. What you should do mm-hmm. is pay the extra couple of dollars. Just, just out of spite. Right. Pay the extra couple of dollars so that you get your statement sent to you through the post. <sighs> And just leave ten cents in there or something, right. right? And every month, just deposit the amount you've got to deposit in fees. Yep. So that they still have to send you out a, a bank statement just to mess with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like and that. Then just send them, mm. send them an email. Like, Thank you very much for the bank statement. I refer to it. Just you know, some like long worded bullshit yeah. sort of letter, yeah. and just keep sending them stuff and just annoy the hell out of them. Yeah. Um, I look. I I don't but, know. But this you can't take it in physically to drop it off. You got to <laughs> mail it in into this digital cosmos. Yeah. No, no. We'll send it. Send it for a registered post <laughs> with a with a red for it. with a red for it. Just to kind of just yeah, to yeah, mess I with like it. that. Yeah, I know. like that. Yeah. Um. I I really that that is absolutely magic. Well, I'm told, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't care everybody do their own research because I don't know. But the one that I've been hearing apparently an announcement was made from the PNN Bank. Which is uh, just so we can actually again backtrack a little bit. That's police and nurses. Okay, it used to be a credit society, and it became something else. Something else became Challenge Bank. It's all been all sorts of things. Right? They actually still are a credit union, by the way. I just, okay. just want to make sure so, that people know that. That what happened was there was a restriction on the use of the word bank. Gotcha. And before you had to actually be a bank or an exception, like the blood bank sure. had an exception. Um, Otherwise, you had to be a credit union or a mutual society or whatever, and you gotcha. weren't allowed to use the word bank, whereas now mm-hmm. they are allowed to use them. Okay. And I strongly suggest that people look at some of those smaller banks. Yeah, Is well, there a difference? And I think people need to know this between a credit union and a normal bank. Shaq, you want to dive into that? I think that's – there, there is a difference theoretically, but for all intents and purposes, not really. Well, in terms of the security so. of people's money. Uh, well, well, there's no difference on that. Yeah. Um, I think the limits at the moment is 250000 insured by the government. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to point out, though, that I, I don't have a crystal ball here. I'm, I'm not a guru or a legal expert. This is just my opinion. Yeah, with that skirt, mate, we're careful with <laughs> crystal balls. We're all right. <laughs> I don't think that if I... I don't think anybody would be left holding the bag. So I say that again, mate. Yeah, sorry, it. say it again. So the, the limit, the, the guarantee, the government guarantee limit is 250000 In my personal opinion, I can't say that if any Australian bank was to actually go down and you had a million dollars in the account, I think the government would give you the money back. You reckon? Because I don't think they would want for there to be that kind of shock to the Australian system. We haven't had a bank failure in this country. Um, I, I just don't see that happening. I don't think the deposits would ever lose Having said that, mm. yeah, government guarantees come with some issues, and Bailings, I don't, I don't like exactly, and I don't trust the banks. I mean, the whole, 
the whole reason why the banks originally were like, oh, don't keep your cash under the under your mattress, put it in the bank. Now we see governments are, you know, in cahoots with the banks. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen things like Cyprus where they had a bail-in, things yeah. like that. So I don't know exactly where you should put your money, but don't trust it all with the banks. I mean, just look for other places to well, put Well, I, I hear the place to keep your money is Balcata. <laughs> Apparently, no, this I don't know if this is satire or not, but it looked very legit, okay? But I, I read on a news site a couple of days ago that they they believe that the place that's got the, the most cash, the most notes being tucked away in Australia and in holes underground and all that sort of thing is Balcata, Western <laughs> Australia. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, I think this has been going on for a while. I, I recently went on to, a, to the Perth Mint. All right. And uh, the tour guide was telling us the story of how um, some early prospectors back in the 1800s mm -hmm. came across a bit of a gold find. Right. And they were going to keep this secret to themselves. So they took the gold to the bank. They wanted to cash the gold in. And the bank, due to the amount of gold they found, and said, where did you find this? Said, well, we're not going to tell you. Right. Yeah. Obviously, they don't want to run on the gold mine. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> so they said, "Well, if you don't tell us where it is, mm -hmm. we're going to assume that you've acquired it through criminal activity." Oh, you've got to be kidding! And I, I, I sat there listening to this, thinking, "My oh my, doesn't history repeat itself?" Hey. Oh. So what did they do to avoid going and having criminal charges mm -hmm. against them? They disclosed that it was a legitimate fine, and overnight course the word got out yeah, around those round see. tables yep. that there was gold in such and such a place out near the gold yep. fields and then you had a gold rush so <sighs> it's it's history repeating itself it's a kind of a presumption well if you've made so much money you must have done the wrong thing that's right i mean well, look, and, a, and martin mcgowan doesn't you. like competition when it comes to mixing gold right well here's a question for you a few years ago i believe this happened while i was away from western australia mm. um rivers of gold through wa at the Perth Mint, uh, I was just reading about it recently, that they they had to fulfil some contract or something happened and they sent in some independent testers to yeah. test the quality about, yeah. of the gold. Yeah. yeah. What? I think it's <laughs> no, well, hey, so that, what they yes. needed, what they needed was 0. 0.9999, so four nines of yeah. purity. And apparently they had added a little bit of silver in that, of course, which is yeah. Pretty common in that industry, and it was 0.9999. The problem was that in the, that contract, as I've understood it, is that they needed the four nines. Yeah. No, that's right. In terms yes. of purity, yeah, with that, the deals that, they so, were doing with China. So it is. It is four nines yep. in everywhere that I'm aware of, except for Dubai, for some reason, which is three nines and a five. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, as far as I'm aware, and, and I'm sure somebody will fact check me, and I'll probably be wrong. But as far as I'm aware, this is that the only gold producing place that can actually put a stamp on something where it's actually guaranteed by a government. Everything else is private. Right. So, you know, when you go around, because I travel a lot and people ask me all the time, you know, you're from Western Australia, what do you know about the gold industry? I don't. I'm not, that's not my specialty area. Gotcha. Um, but when I mentioned I'm actually from Perth, everyone's like, oh, the Perth Mint, oh, their, their gold's fantastic. There, there hasn't not really been a question about the quality. Well, now but, there but, is. But, but the thing is that something has happened here how that's happened, like somebody has to be responsible for it. How did this happen? Oh, we're talking about West Australian institutions. All right, well, let's put another spin on it. Let's say you bought a business, right? Mm -hmm. And it was has been in competition to you in the past. Yep. You want to further the brand of the company that you've got rather than mm -hmm. further the one that you've just bought out. So you've gotten rid of that competitor. Are you entitled to shut it down and to ruin it and all that sort of stuff and put it to the ground and you be the one that takes over that's later as on? That's as business. Was that what CBA is just That's exactly done here? what's happened. Exactly what's right. Happened. So is, is CBA wrong in doing that? It's their choice. How much did they pay for Bankwest and, uh, all those years ago? And, well, CBA is supposed to be the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. It is supposed to be the People's Bank, and clearly it's not. Well, uh, but, but this is been the People's Bank for years. We talked about um, last time I was here. We talked about the issue with grocery stores and whether or not the prices are too high with their, their price gouging or not. And I think the consensus that we came up with mm. was that what we need is more competition. Absolutely. I think that what we do need in this market in banking mm. is for there to be more competition. Yeah. If if the big banks legitimately feel, and, and I can understand, to be honest, if they legitimately feel that running branches in rural areas is just not a profitable thing for them to be doing and they want to shut down, fine. But then communities should be able to say, actually, we live in wherever. Mm -hmm. There's enough people in this community to set a bank up. Yep. So let's set a bank up. And okay, maybe we've only got 2,000 customers. It's fine. Right? But it's, it's, a, you know, it's a local branch. It's a very small bank. 
you know, it has to comply with all the rules. Hmm. Maybe that's something that 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 we should see, and maybe that's something that public should be asking for is smaller smaller institutions, so that you actually get the service that you want. Because hey, if you live in Meriden, yep, why not be able to go to your local Meriden bank branch, which is or, or bank, which hmm. is owned collectively by the farmers in your area. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a. I don't know exactly. No, what I, the solutions I, I, are, I but quite like the idea. A, I actually agree with that idea. I think yeah. that I remember in the eighties um uh, that you know there was just there seemed to be a lot of banks okay there seemed to be more right i mean um i mean i remember challenge i remember you know i uh, remember uh, um, challenge got bought out again by mm, westpac there you go yeah. i was about to say i remember westpac and and the association there and kind of thing I, I remember i just maybe it's just a false perception i was much 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 younger than i was you know uh, a teen um but yet there seemed to be a lot more variety in banks we, we used to have the the six pillars um of the financial industry in, mm -hmm. in the Australian economy, which was the big four banks mm -hmm. plus BT and Mercantile Mutual. Yep. Those six were not allowed to merge with each other, to buy each other out, etc. Right. Uh, then that was reduced to four. And so we know that BT, I believe, was bought by Westpac. And I think Mercantile Mutual was bought by NAB, I believe. I, I think you're I bang think that's, Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, look, I think that, that having that lack of variety – um, I think that hurts us. And I think yep. we have to be very worried about that consolidation that we see across all of our major industries because at the end of the day, this has utility value to us. And I mm. think that we should be uh, saying to government, we need to have less regulations to allow more competition into these areas. And it's the only way that we can stop these big banks or big corporations in this country mm -hmm. from just taking over everything. And like, okay, at a very, very simple level, okay, I think that I was having this conversation just a couple of days ago and, and a friend of mine was saying, oh, I love using the card. It's just more convenient. It's cleaner. I just, I like it. And I get that. I absolutely get that. But there's a flip side to that. I said to her, okay, that's great and all, but you realise that someone's taking a cut every single time that you use it. So your money is getting less and less effective. You are basically, you know, it is deflating in value. So yeah, that convenience, remember, you are paying for it. You are paying for it. Well, you are. And <laughs> the issue has been calm. It's getting harder and harder to get the hands on the cash if yeah. that's what you want to use. Of course. Yes, it is more from the beginning, a little bit more inconvenient. You have to either go into the bar branch or you have yep. to go to the ATM to get the cash to do what you want to do. Um, but at the same time, what's in the back of my mind in all of this is what's going on. In mm. terms of what do the banks know that not leaking out to the general populace? Like social credit system, perhaps. I don't know. You know. So I think we've got to dig a little bit deeper. We are in the age of crypto. Yep. We are in the age of where there is a possibility of being, if you know what you're doing, the custodian of your own wealth. Mm -hmm. I'm finding the older generation don't want to know about it. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a personal friend of mine ring me up in a bit of a panic or leave a late message the other night when we were, we were all out and I didn't hear it till quite late. Oh. Found out that I texted him as an emergency. It's okay. No, I can wait the next day. But it looked like he's been scammed by some crypto Ooh. thing overseas. Um, thankfully, he lost a, a small amount of money at risk. And we were coming up with a strategy to kind of recoup that and, and you know, kind of get him to a point where mm -hmm. the offenders were without excuse to, to do that, to define whether they are a scam or not. Okay. He just didn't want to do it. And that's fine. I respect that. Okay. I said, look, the good thing is you haven't lost tens of thousands of dollars. Sure, it's sure. manageable what you've done. But you've got to – there is a bit of education for well, those going no doubt, down right. that path to actually know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I think some of the older generation go, oh, too hard. I don't want to. Um, well, it, it's, not gonna, it's not going to happen. Let me, let me tell you that right now. The, What's the, not going to happen? Well, the whole idea that people are going to go to crypto – and be subject to scams is not going to happen. The the reason why they put they want these scams to occur, of course they do, because that way people are going to do what people always do. Well, but the, they're going to uh, go crying to government and say, "Government, you're going to regulate this," and that's how they're going to come well, in. See, that's the thing: the banks aren't going to do this by force. Mm -hmm. The 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 big the, the governments. I know I sound like some tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist maniac here. Sure, but they don't do it by forcing it on you. They do it by having you go to them and say, I want you to do this for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what ends up happening. It's like any right? good relationship. But what a I'm woman saying, will explain, how she'll actually convince you that it was your idea. I get it. Yeah. yeah. It was my idea for you to take all my money and <laughs> the kids <Yeah. laughs> and run off. Yeah, that's that's right. it was my idea. It was brilliant. What, <laughs> I'm I'm, what I'm saying is this, that the banks are going to use this, this technology. They are. 
All right, they they're going to use that technology no because doubt. it's going to cut cut a lot of their costs in terms of administration. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so it's either you get in the game and do it as the banks do, or do you let them do it for you? Well, that's the whole thing. See, mm -hmm. if the banks embrace this technology, what ends up happening is that people don't need the banks as much anymore. Correct. Right, and you've already got these sort of you know e banks or these like virtual banks and stuff like that that exist that you know, allow people to have like like Wise and some of these sorts of companies that allow you to have sort of an online thing and you've got you hold multiple currencies and that sort of stuff. The banks aren't going to want to lose market share, mm -hmm. so they're going to try and crush all of those other groups so that they've got the exclusivity over this. But what's the solution here? I think really you'd have to look at having an alternative currency that can actually hold its value over time. And I don't know what that looks well, like. Something's got to be gold-based or something based in something that's Well, uh, but the problem is if we go back to a gold-based system, then it's subject to the supply and demand pressures of gold. Um, I think looking towards the future, whilst gold has been a great thing for us to have used throughout, throughout history, it's mm -hmm. been really the, the main thing that we've used. Fiat currency has all sorts of issues with it. Um Mostly, I think, trust because of inflation eroding its value. Sure. I'm not sure what an alternative is. Is it a commodity-based currency? Is it something else? I don't know. But certainly, I think we should be looking towards the future and not looking well, back I, to I something like that. I would challenge the notion that a lot of the industry, the banking industry, the financial mm. industry does, and that is a scarcity, supply and demand. Mm. I actually think there's a more abundance of gold than they'll make oh, out. Oh, no doubt about that. I mean, that's the case with diamonds. Diamonds are quite common, apparently. It's just the supply of diamonds is not common. Mm. So I think that's pushed and, and manipulated a lot of the prices in the past, that notion of, hey, this is scarce, uh, therefore. But that price has been manipulated by the, the banks in terms well, of the well, I'm, I'm and, scarce, and but so I don't like, issue my own currency, call it the, the dollar of shack, and then expect people to accept it. Although if any of our viewers are willing to, I'm happy, I'm happy to issue <laughs> Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm open. Shack bucks. I'm open. Shack bucks, that's it. We'll <laughs> <laughs> just, just call them sharks. I don't know. <laughs>